Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to unboxing the Mesh Series IoT development boards from the company Particle. And they have three hardware configurations for this family of Mesh IoT boards. The Argon, the Boron, and the Xenon. We're going to be looking at the Boron and the Xenon. Those are the two that I bought. Uh, the Argon has Wi-Fi, the Boron has cellular. Before I get started, I'll just mention, uh, as always, check out Forstronics.com for the design manufacturer and consulting services Forstronics offers. And if you like what you see here in this video, please subscribe to the channel or hit the thumbs up on the video. All right, let's get started. Since this is an unboxing video, I'll show the, uh, the box uh, for the two. So I pre-ordered these, so I got these uh, early. I put down the money during the summer of 2018. I just got these uh, in early November of 2018. I'll talk about the hardware, the technical specs, and things like that, and the software in a second. But you can see that the boxes, they, they come with the board, but they also come with uh, breadboard and some resistors and LEDs, so you can get started testing right away. It comes with the USB cable. If you're looking at the Boron, which has cellular capabilities, that comes with a cellular antenna. And you can see the packaging's pretty nice. Now, now me being a cheapskate, whenever I see nice packaging like this, I just think to myself, well, if they use crappier packaging, maybe I could have they could have charged less for the product. But anyway, the, the packaging's real nice. And let me dive into the hardware specs. So there's three boards, and I'm gonna talk once again about the Boron, the Xenon. And the whole idea is this is a mesh series. So in the past, Particle has sold um, IoT development boards that were that connected to the cloud. But this actually allows you to set up a mesh network, and a mesh network is typically a network where you can pass data through nodes to, and, and what they did here is they then have a central gateway and that central gateway can then take all the data from all the nodes and pass it up to the cloud. And so the Argon would be the Wi-Fi gateway and the Boron, which is the one I bought, is the LTE or cellular gateway. So it doesn't matter if you don't have a Wi-Fi signal as long as you have a cellular tower in the, in the area, that can serve as your gateway. And the Xenon, the Xenon just has Bluetooth and the mesh communication. So the Xenon can't function by itself and connect to the, the cloud. The Xenon has to be used with the Boron or the Argon. And then you can have you know, one Boron and I don't know, 20 different Xenons spread around your house or spread around your factory to create this mesh network. But all the data will flow up to the cloud through the gateway, which will either be an Argon or a Boron. So just wanted to mention that. The heart of these boards, the hardware heart of these boards is the Nordic uh, NRF52840 system on a chip. And this has a ARM 32-bit processor. You can see some of the specs there. And it also has built-in Bluetooth. It has a near-field communication tag. It has a lot of uh, you know, GPIO, GPIO pins, excuse me. It basically has you know, a setup like an Arduino. Uh, where it has, you know, UART, I squared C, SPI, some analog, some digital. And as you can see, it, it uses the feather footprint, you know, which was developed by Adafruit. And you're starting to see it on the, the, the newer Arduino boards. It's using that same footprint so it can work with any shields or complementary hardware that goes with the, the feather footprint. It has an integrated battery charger. It has a nice uh, RGB status LED. But one thing I want to mention, and I just kind of ran through the hardware kind of quick, but the real value in this, and, and I've kind of found out myself, is in the software. And so you're buying the hardware, but they really have done a great job with the communication and the, and the cloud software to make this really easy to use and really easy to establish a mesh network. And I'm going to talk about the software a little bit more in detail. Before I do that, though, let's look at a quick block diagram of the Boron's hardware. And you can then picture what the Xenon's hardware is. It's just gonna be missing some of the, the other communication that, that the Boron has. So we can see the, the Nordic uh, microcontroller, which is the heart of the, the chip. We have our battery charger ICs. We have our U-Block Sera U20201. And this is basically serves as the cellular chip. So Ublox is a company that makes wireless chips. They, they make a, I showed before the GPS chip 
forget the, the model number, but I had a video on the GPS chip made by Ublox in the past. Uh, so they're a well-known company. They have different cellular options. I just have the LTE version. And you can see they have a SIM card that can be set up. Uh, one of the nice things uh, is the Nordic chip has built-in Bluetooth and they actually have an app to connect to it and to do the configuration. And I'll show that in a little bit. But the Nordic chip has built-in Bluetooth. And one of the things I was asking myself was, well, where is the wireless mesh communication chip? And when I looked at the Nordic data sheet for the NRF52840, I see that it uses Bluetooth, Bluetooth 5, which advertises a Bluetooth mesh capability. So I'm guessing, and, and maybe Particle has this in their documentation, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't look at every piece of documentation, but I'm guessing Particle then is leveraging that Bluetooth mesh capability for establishing a mesh network with these, uh, with these boards. Okay, as I mentioned, I wanted to talk about the software because that's the real value. I mean, the hardware is nice. They have nice chips on there. They have modern features, so on and so forth. Uh, but you can buy a lot of boards with that, with those kind of, kind of capabilities or the kinds of chips on them. The really nice thing Particle did was the software to make setting up a mesh network really easy and sending data to the cloud really easy. I mentioned the app. So I'm showing a picture of the app on the right, which is showing the network I created. And I have the, the two devices on there, which I named. So you can name them whatever you want. So I named it, you know, Forstronics or FT Boron and FT Mesh device. So it shows my connected devices on the app. And, you know, I'm not gonna show it for time's sake, but it's just really easy and they're set up to connect a device. You're not messing around with addressing schemes. You don't even have to, in your own software that you're loading onto these boards, you don't have to handle the communication traffic. Let's say you're a mesh node that's, that's data is going through that mesh node to the gateway. You don't have to handle that data. That's all handled by their software under the hood. The user is totally abstracted from all those complexities. So it's really easy to set up a mesh network. When I was doing this, the only complaint I have is the app was a little flaky sometimes with the Bluetooth connection. There's a couple times where it was trying to connect and it just ran forever until I had to basically kill the app and, and start it over again. But other than those minor issues, the app was really good in setting these up. And then also the cloud software. So we're gonna see an example of this, but you know they have their own IDE, which you can download for the desktop, or they have a web browser hosted one. That's the one I'm gonna use. But they also have this thing called the console, which allows you to look at the data coming from or or going to your device. And you can even send data from the console to your device to do testing and initial development. But once again, they, they handle all the data going to the cloud. They also, you know, for the cellular communication, they give you three months free, but they handle the subscription. So you just pay a small fee. I think it was like $3 a month. But that's all handled by them. It's all abstracted for the user. So all you have to do is do the you know, the sensors or the little bit of code to create your IoT network. Another feature of the app that I'll just show real quick is the Tinker part. So this is another part of the app where you can connect to, for instance, the Boron using Bluetooth and you can actually change the pin. So you can see A5, I had an LED hooked up to it. I used the LED and resistor that came with the, the product, hooked it up, A5 is, is it's supposed to be ground. I have the LED hooked up through uh, VCC or, or the power bus. Then I hit it low, the LED turns on. I, I hit it high, the LED turns off. So you can kind of do some initial testing with the app or just check to make things, make sure things are working correctly. Uh, one thing too, I want to mention about the cloud software. I didn't try this yet because I'm just getting started myself, but the idea is they can also plug into existing IoT platforms like Microsoft Azure's Google Maps, Google Cloud, ThingSpeak. I, I don't know if you, I have a video on ThingSpeak, which is a, I like ThingSpeak. Uh, they, so you, you can integrate with those things, which I think is nice because, you know, I don't know how big a company Particle is, but for instance, take Microsoft Azure. They, don't, they probably don't have the manpower to create a cloud platform as robust as Microsoft Azure's or Google Maps. So it makes sense to have these features so you can integrate into those. So I, I really like that. I haven't tried it yet, but I really like it. Okay, that's a quick introduction to the hardware. I talked a little bit about the software. Let's look at an example in action and we can see some of the clear value 
clear software value of, of these boards. Okay, what you're looking at here is their IDE. And so I created an account, I logged in, and here you're looking at, what I did was I took one of their example programs. So they, you know, they have example programs, they have documentation, they have libraries, so you can go through all that. But I took their web connected LED and I slightly modified it and I call it web connected LED one. But all I did was add another feature in here that allows you to see the back and forth communication. So this basically allows you to turn on an LED from the cloud. And I'll show an example using their console. It then writes data back to the cloud to let you know the state of the LED. And that's the part that I added. So you can see they create two variables, so you can actually set up more than one LED if you want, but I'm just gonna use the, the LED that's that's built into the board. It you know If you're familiar with Arduino, they use a lot of the same type functions, so you're setting the pins to output. Here's the, the important thing though, the particle dot function LED, LED toggle. The particle cloud has knowledge that this function exists on your device. And so it knows if you send information related to that function to the cloud, it automatically then does that action on the board. So there's a link to understanding what's on the board and the code to what's in the cloud. And, and I'll, once again, I'll show that so it makes a little more sense. But remember this, this function, it's called LED, LED toggle. And then we do uh, digital writes just to turn the LEDs off. We don't have to do anything in the loop. And then here's that, that function, the LED toggle. And so you can send in a string command. If you send in on, it's gonna turn the LED on. And if you, you put in off, it's gonna turn the LED off. And then of course, if you don't put in any the right words, it'll just do nothing. But the idea is this is coming from the cloud, this on off, that's where it's gonna come from. And the part that I added was another one of their cloud functions, publish. So after on is called, I turn on the LED and then to, to the cloud, I send the state of the LED. I say, this is the new state of the LED, it's on. This is the new state of the LED, it's off. Then I just load this onto the, the, the chip and we can see a quick demo. Now I'm gonna load this on the Xenon. So I'm not gonna load any code on the Boron. The Boron though is set up and it's connected to the cellular network here. And the Xenon is connected to that same is connected to this, the, the mesh network that the boron is on. So the xenon is gonna talk through the boron. Okay, you should be able to see now the, the boards set up. I have the xenon in front and I have the boron in back. You can see the, the cellular antennas connected to the boron. I have an LED and a resistor. But what we're gonna be looking at is the LED on the bottom left corner of the, the Xenon where the USB connector is. So that's what we're gonna control and toggle. Now you're looking at the console. So we're looking at the console and you can see the, the name of the device. Remember from my app uh, screenshot, the FT mesh device, this is the Xenon and it gives you information on it. I probably actually shouldn't show my ID so I'm probably gonna blur that out. But this is my cloud console. So we're connected to the web. And if you remember the function that I showed you, the LED function, here is that function right here. So I can test it by sending an argument through here. So for instance, let's say I send on. I send it through here, it's processing, and we see the LED come on in the video screen with the Xenon. Now we also saw this data coming back. So remember the publish function. So after it turned on, the Xenon received this and then it sent back the new state and the new state is on. So how easy was that? And I can, you know, turn it, turn it off. So there, now the LED is off and we got our reply that the LED is off and it's timestamped. So that was really easy with just a little bit of code. We have cloud communicationing happening back and forth. And of course, ideally you'd plug this into something else where this data would be coming from, you know, another data source, or I would be logging to a plot or something like that. But this is just the consoles used to sort of test 
your design to send data back and forth. Another huge valuable thing that I think, you know, I already mentioned, but I want to make it clear is the communication is so abstracted. Notice that we didn't even have to load any code onto the boron. So remember, we're using the Xenon. The Xenon does not connect, connect to the cloud. It connects to the gateway, which is the boron. But we didn't even, I didn't even load any code on the boron yet. So you're basically looking, so the whole point or the whole value is you're totally abstracted from all the gateway handling of the data, sending it, receiving it back and forth. That is totally abstracted from you as the user. You just have to write the code to handle the data, to you know make measurements from the sensors. So real easy to get up and get started with a mesh network that connects to the cloud. Here's just a one last slide I have on pros and cons. And I, I think I just talked about one of the big pros. Very easy to set it up. The communication tools, you know, handle all the stuff. They make it very easy to get up and running. You know, even if you're not an electrical engineer, if you're a mechanical engineer or an agricultural engineer, if you have some technology knowledge, you could ramp up on this platform and set up your own sensor network. It's great. The cons, I, I mean, I, I just kind of reached for these. I, these aren't big cons. It just depends what you're trying to do. But you're sort of, you know, using this platform, you're basically tied to the particle platform. And, and, and so you don't have a lot of flexibility. I'm sure there's ways to dig into their libraries and things like that. But you're sort of in their ecosystem. So as long as that's okay with you, you're part of the particle ecosystem. And the other slight con is if you have real strict timing considerations, like when you want data to arrive or priority ordering of the data, you know, you don't have control of that. You're not kind of seeing what's going on behind the scenes. So if that was real important for your application, then this may not be the right platform. But other than those things, I could, it was hard for me to come up with many cons. I really like this idea. I like how easy it was, and I'm probably going to do a little more with these devices in the future. Okay. That's it for this video, Unboxing Particle Mesh Series IoT Development Boards. We looked at the Boron and the Xenon. If you have any questions related to the video, use the comment section below. And if you have anything to add, you know, something I missed, you know, I didn't read all of their documentation. So if there's something cool that maybe you want to mention that I missed, feel free to use the comment section. And once again, if you like what you saw here, hit the thumbs up. If you ever wanted to set up one of these networks, but you don't want to do it themselves, you can go to forcetronics.com and use our contracting services. Thank you for watching.